Hello and welcome back. In video number 11, we learned that slightly imperfect X-wings can still produce candidate eliminations if the conditions are just right. These same principles also apply to swordfish, or any fish really, and today we are going to learn how to identify and employ finned and sashimi swordfish. Now if you haven't watched videos number 10, 11, 11a, and 12, you might have a hard time understanding today's lesson. So I urge you to go back and watch those four tutorials right now if you haven't already done so. Okay? Good. When fish patterns contain one or more extra candidates that kind of spoil what would have otherwise been a perfect fish, these additional candidates are called fins. The fins must always be in the base sets, not the cover sets. And just remember that in order for us to still be able to make candidate eliminations in a finned or a sashimi fish of any size, the fins must always be contained entirely within only one block of the fish pattern. And further, candidate eliminations, if any, can only occur within that same block. Okay, let's go over to the puzzle board and see how this works. All right, here we have a basic swordfish with the base sets in rows 3, 5, and 8, and the cover sets in columns 1, 4, and 7. As you can see, there are only two instances of candidate 7 in each of the base sets, and they line up perfectly so that the three cover sets intersect with them to contain all of the base candidates. Now, of course, there will be additional candidates in all of these cells in a real puzzle, but I just want you to zero in on what's happening with candidate 7 here in this diagram. As we learned in video number 12, when you have a situation like this, all the candidate 7s in the cover sets that lie outside the yellow intersection cells must be false. But what happens if there is an additional candidate 7 in one of the base sets that is not contained in one of the cover sets the presence of which messes up this otherwise perfect swordfish. Let's say there is an extra candidate 7 here in row 3, column 5. So now you cannot treat this as a basic swordfish anymore because it doesn't qualify as such according to normal fish rules. The cover sets do not cover or contain all the base candidates now. This extra candidate is called a fin. And once again, let's look at the two cases or outcomes that are possible by considering first that the fin is false and then considering that the fin is true. These are the only two possibilities for the fin, as is the case for any candidate in the entire puzzle. It is either true or false. If the fin is false, then you have a normal swordfish and these two candidate sevens in row one, column four, and in row two, column four, would be false. But if the fin is true, that would negate all other candidate sevens in the rest of this block, block number two, because there can only be one seven placed in that block. So these two sevens in the red cells are false either way and can be eliminated. Both cases for the fin lead to the same conclusion. Please note that if there are extra candidate sevens in any of the cover sets, like if there are an extra one here or an extra one here, it doesn't change anything. In any fish pattern, the restrictions are only on the base sets. The base sets in a basic swordfish must contain either two or three instances of the fish digit, here being candidate seven. The cover sets can have the fish digit in all nine cells. And if there is an additional fin here, you get the same result. These two fins act as a unit, and the only two possibilities for them are A, either they are both false, or B, one of them is true. They cannot both be true. So again, if they are both false, these two candidate sevens in the red cells are false because of the swordfish. And if either one of the fins is true, those same two candidate sevens in the red cells would also be false because there can only be one seven placed in that block. 
So those two sevens in the red cells are false either way and can be eliminated. The key things to remember here are that one, there can only be fins in one block of the swordfish, and two, candidate eliminations can only be made in the same block with the fins. A candidate can only be eliminated if it sees all the fins. This is true with any size fish. The fins have no effect on the rest of the swordfish outside of that block. And if there are fins in more than one block of the swordfish, there is nothing you can do, and you must look for something else. Like if there were another fin here or here, it would negate the whole finned swordfish technique. The fins must all lie within only one block, or it is a useless configuration. All right, let's see what this looks like when the base sets are in the columns. Here in this diagram, we have a basic swordfish on candidate 2 in columns 2, 5, and 7. These are the base sets, and the cover sets are rows 1, 4, and 8. Remember that if the base sets are in the rows, the eliminations will be made in the columns. And if the base sets are in the columns, then the eliminations will be made in the rows. So in this case, all the candidate twos in the light blue colored cells are false. But let's say this pattern is spoiled by one or two fins here in block five. Remember, the fins must lie in the base sets and must be contained within only one block. Now, if either of these fins is true, then the candidate twos in R4, C4 and in R4, C6 have to be false. And if both of those fins are false, then those same two candidate twos in the red cells must also be false because of the swordfish. So either way, those two candidate twos in the red cells are false and you can eliminate them with confidence. Now before we go through some examples, let's take a look at some rare variations that you might come across and wonder about. Now if you see something like this, where two of the base sets lie in the same chute, here being rows two and three, it is possible to have up to four fins, as you can see in those dark blue cells in row two, column one and two, and row three, column one and two. And then you will only get that one elimination up in row one, column three. Those four candidate nines in the dark blue cells can either all be false or only one of them can be true. And either way, the candidate nine in row three, column one will be false. And here, the same configuration, except the cover sets are now in the same chute in rows two and three. Now you only have room for one fin in row one, column three. And you can have up to four eliminations in those red cells in row two, column one and two, and row three, column one and two. And if you see something like this, where all three cover sets lie in the same chute, you can look at this as a swordfish, or you can look at it as three sets of locked candidates type two, where those nines in the yellow cells will claim all the other instances of candidate nine in those three blocks. Or you can see it as a swordfish, and if there is an extra nine in either one of these cells here, then it's just part of the swordfish or an extra one of the locked candidates and will not really be a fin at all. And then lastly, if you see something like this, where the three base sets are all in the same chute, then an extra candidate nine here is not going to do anything because there is nothing left to eliminate in that block. The three cells that would be in the cover sets are all taken up in block three. So you would still have the eliminations from the locked candidates type one in blocks one and block two and all the other nines in column three and column six would be false in this case. And you would not view this as a finned swordfish. Okay? All right, let's take a look at some real examples and some real puzzles. Okay, in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate one and let's zero in on rows three, eight, and nine. And there's your swordfish. But the only problem is we've got a fin here in row eight, column six. 
So we can only look at block eight and the only candidate one that would be eliminated by that swordfish if the fin were not there is here in row seven, column four. So that candidate one would be eliminated either way. If the fin were true, that candidate one would be false. And if the fin were not there, that candidate one would be false because of the swordfish. Okay, next one. All right, in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate four. And let's look at rows two, five, and seven. There's your swordfish and there's your fin. Now in this case, the cover sets are in the same shoot in column one and column three. They're in that same vertical shoot. So there could be up to four eliminations here, but in this case, there are only two. Here in row nine, column one, and in row nine, column three. So you can eliminate both of those fours because they would be eliminated by the swordfish if the fin were not there. And if the fin is true in the blue cell, both of those fours would also be false. Okay, next. Okay, this time the base sets will be in the columns. So let's take a look at candidate six and let's take a look at column one, column five, and column eight. Now that would be a swordfish, except you have a fin right there. So we can only look at block two because that's where the fin is. And we can eliminate these two candidate sixes because they would be eliminated if the fin were true. And if the fin were false or not there, those two same candidate sixes would be eliminated by virtue of the swordfish. All right, next one. All right, again, the base sets will be in the columns. And let's take a look at candidate seven. And let's take a look at columns one, column five, and column eight. There's your swordfish. And this time we have two fins. It's in this base set here in column five. So now we look and we say, which candidate seven could be eliminated either way, whether those fins were both false or whether one of them is true. And it turns out that there is only one elimination here in row three, column six, in this cell right here. Because that candidate seven would be false if either one of the fins were true. And it would also be false because of the swordfish if both the fins were false. All right, next. All right, we're gonna look at candidate seven again, but this time the base sets will be in the rows. And they're going to be in row two, five, and nine. So there are your base sets, but we've got a fin right here that spoils the swordfish. So now we can make eliminations only in the same block with the fin, which would be block five, and there could be up to four eliminations here because two of the cover sets are in the same vertical chute here. It doesn't have to be vertical, it could be horizontal, but here the cover sets are in the column, so it's in this center vertical chute. Now there could be eliminations here in row four, column five, and in row six, column five, but those cells are already solved with the three and the one. So the only eliminations in this case are gonna be here and here, and we can eliminate those two sevens because they would be false if the fin were true, and they would be false if the fin were false because of the swordfish. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, let's take a look at candidate three, and this time the base sets will be in column one, column six, and column seven. There's your swordfish, and there is your fin. So this will allow us to make possible eliminations in block seven. So we can see that there are two in row nine, column two, and in row nine, column three. Those two candidate threes would be false whether the fin was true or false. If the fin is true, they both have to be false, those threes in the red cells. And if the fin is false, those threes in the red cells would be false because of the swordfish. All right, next one. All right, let's take a look at candidate two in row two, row five, and row seven. There's your swordfish. Now we've got two fins this time, 
but only one elimination. And that elimination is going to be in row four, column seven, right there. That's the only candidate two that could be eliminated, whether the fins are both false or whether one of them is true. And we can eliminate that candidate two. Okay, let's take a look at the last one. All right, once again, we're gonna look at candidate seven in column one, column five, and column seven. There's your swordfish, there is your fin. And this time we're gonna have two eliminations, but there could be up to four in this case because two of the cover sets are in the same horizontal shoot as you can see, rows one and row two. But because there are only sevens in row one, column eight, and in row two, column nine, those are the only two that we can eliminate. Those are in the cover sets, and the fin is in the base set of column seven, as you can see. So we can eliminate that seven, and that seven, and that's it. So let's move on to the finned sashimi swordfish. Okay, here we have a finned swordfish on candidate four with the base sets in rows two, five, and eight, and the cover sets in columns three, six, and seven. And as you can see, there are two fins in block two in those two dark blue cells, row two, column four, and row two, column five. If you recall from video number 11, it is possible to apply this finned technique even if one of the base candidates is missing with a digit already placed in that cell, like this. Or if there are other candidates in that cell other than the fish digit, like this. That works just the same. This is known as a sashimi swordfish. Again, why this configuration is called sashimi remains a mystery to me but that's what it's called. Now, if you know the answer to this or can figure it out, please send me an email and tell me, okay? Thank you. I will really appreciate it and I will give you full credit for it on my website, I promise. But here is the logic of how this works. If these two fins were not here, then you would have a naked single in this cell and that would eliminate all the other fours in column three and then you would have an X-wing down here and these two fours up in row one, column six, and row three, column six, would be eliminated because of the X-wing, okay? And if either one of those fins was true, those two fours in the red cells would also be false because there can only be one four in block two. A sashimi swordfish will always have fins because without any fins, it will be something else. Like if there is only one other base candidate in the base set where the candidate is missing, like here in row two, and there are no fins, then the pattern would be reduced to a naked single like this, leaving an X-wing down here in the lower right in these four yellow cells as we saw before. And if one of the base sets has two base candidates and the third position is the one that's missing, like here in row five, for instance, then without fins, this would simply be a normal swordfish. So don't be confused by that. But if there are any fins in that block, like here and here, then you can apply the sashimi principles like this. If either of those fins is true, these two fours will be false because there can only be one four in block five. And if neither of those fins were there, those two candidate fours in the red cells would be false because of the swordfish. Now let me show you another rare case. Just like with a finned swordfish, if two of the cover sets lie in one chute and you've got two base candidates missing from one block like this, this still works as a sashimi swordfish 
and there can be one fin, as you see in row 2, column 1, and up to four eliminations in this case. The four candidate 6s in the red colored cells would be false. Because if the fin were not there, this would be a naked single over here in row 2, column 7, and you'd be left with an X-wing, and those four 6s in the red cells would be false because of the X-wing. And then on the other hand, if the 6 in the dark blue cell were true, all the other 6s in block 1 would be false because there can only be one 6 in block 1. Okay? That's pretty simple, right? So let's look at some real examples and some real puzzles, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Okay, here we have candidate 2 highlighted, and let's take a look at column 3, column 6, and column 7. Now there would have been a swordfish if there would have been a candidate 2 in this cell in row 5, column 3, but instead there's a 9 placed, and the 2 is offset. And there's your fin right there. So that's what you look for. You look for a swordfish where one of the base candidates is offset. Now there could have been another fin up there, but there's not. There's no two there. But it, there could have just as well been one up there. But here we have a candidate two in this cell. And the result of this is that these two candidate twos are going to be false. And the reason why is because case one, if this candidate two in the blue cell is false, then the candidate 2 at the top of column 3 is going to be a naked single because that would be the only 2 left in column 3. So you'd solve that, and I can't do it because that's not going to be the solution to that cell, but that would be a naked single, which would negate this 2 over in row 1, column 7, which would leave a naked single in row 9, column 7, which would negate this 2 in row 9, column 6, which would leave a naked single in row 5, column 6. And so this 2 would be true, and these two 2's in the red cells would be false. So that's case 1. I know that was a long explanation, but that's the way it works. And then if the fin were true, that can be the only 2 in that block. So those same two candidate 2's in the red cells would be false either way, and you can eliminate both of them. Now remember, in any kind of finned fish, whether it's sashimi or just a regular finned fish, the fins can only be in one block. If there are fins in more than one block, it's not going to work. And then there can only be candidate eliminations within that same block with the fin. And the final rule is a candidate can only be eliminated if it sees all the fins. Okay? All right, let's go to the next one. All right, in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate 7. We'll light them up, and we'll look at columns 3, column 5, and column 7. Okay, now there would be a perfect swordfish if this cell in row 6, column 5, contained a candidate 7, but there's not. It's missing. And so this is a sashimi swordfish. And the reason it's sashimi is because the candidate 7 is missing where we need it to be. And it can either be solved with a number or it can have candidates other than the fish digit. So the fish digit here is 7, so there's no 7 in there. There's just a 1 and an 8 in that cell in row 6, column 5. So this qualifies, and our two fins are here. Again, those are offset off of what would have been a perfect swordfish. If the fins weren't there and there was a seven, candidate 7, in this cell in row 6, column 5, that would be a perfect swordfish. But instead, the candidate is missing here, and we've got two fins. Now remember, the fins will always be in the base sets, okay? And the fins can only be in one block, and the candidate can only be eliminated if it sees all the fins. And which candidate would be eliminated by the swordfish if those fins weren't there? Well, it's right here. So this candidate would be false whether those fins were not there because the swordfish would eliminate that candidate 7. And if either one of those fins were true, that candidate 7 would also be false. So either way, it is false and you can eliminate it. All right, next one. All right, here let's take a look at candidate 3. We'll light them up. And this time the base sets will be in the rows. So we're going to look at row 1, row 6, and row 8. 
Now you've got to have a good eye to see these because you're not going to see these yellow cells in a puzzle like I'm showing you. But you have to realize that where this nine is here in row eight, column two, that could have been a swordfish. There are your three base sets, row one, row six, and row eight. But instead, you've got two offset fins here in row eight on either side of that nine. So the nine makes the swordfish incomplete. They say degenerate, if you will. So this is a sashimi swordfish, and you've got two fins, and the only candidate that can be eliminated is here in this cell, because that candidate three would be false if either one of those fins were true, and if both fins were false, this candidate three would be eliminated because of the swordfish. But really, it's not a swordfish. What happens is this three over here in row eight, column eight, becomes a naked single, and then it's a series of naked singles. So if this is a naked single, this one up here is false, and then this one here in row one, column five would be true, and then this one would be false down here in row six, column five, and then that would make this a naked single in row six, column two, and that would negate the three in row seven, column two. Okay, next one. All right, for the rest of these examples, instead of explaining the logic behind each one, I'm just going to demonstrate the eliminations because I think you understand all the principles that were explained in the beginning of this tutorial. So in this diagram, let's take a look at candidate one. I'm gonna light them up, and the base sets this time will be in the columns. And it's gonna be column one, column five, and column nine. And then here is your sashimi cell, row one, column one. There's an eight place there, which makes this a fin. The fin is in the base set. The fin is in column one, which is the base set. So now the eliminations will be in the rows because the base sets are in the columns. And the candidates that will be eliminated in this puzzle are going to be here and here. So both of those candidate ones will be false. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, here in this puzzle, we have candidate eight highlighted. And I lied a minute ago when I said I was going to stop explaining the logic of each one to save time. But this one is worth it because it's very unusual and very interesting and it's worth an explanation. So let's take a look at candidate eight in the columns and the base sets will be column four, column seven, and column eight. And what's interesting here is two of the base sets are in the same chute. They're in the same vertical chute. Column seven and column eight are both in the same chute. So what happens here is we've got two sashimi cells, two cells that are missing the candidate eight. And that means we have three fins. There could have been four, but that cell in row five, column eight is already filled. So we have three fins and two sashimi cells. So this is gonna take a lot of imagination on your part, so I want you to stick with me on this and try to follow this because it's really cool. Those three fins, either they are all false or one of them is true. They cannot all be true or two cannot be true. They're either all false or one is true. So if one of them is true, this candidate eight in row four, column nine will be false because there can only be one candidate eight in that block, okay? Now if all three of those candidate eights in the blue cells, the fins, if they are all false, let's see what happens. First, you're going to end up with a naked single in row three, column seven. This eight will be a naked single because these fins are false, okay? So the first thing you have to remember is there can be no other candidate eight in row three now. So don't forget that because that's gonna come up later. So this candidate eight in row three, column seven is going to be true if the fins are all false. So what happens is that means because this eight in row three, column eight is false and the fins are false, that means this one, this blue one here in row six, column eight is also false. That leaves a naked single in row eight, column eight. And so if that eight is true, this one here in the yellow cell in row eight, column four will be false. And that's going to leave a naked single in row four, column four, because remember, because the first eight was true, there are no other eights in row three. 
So because this 8 in row 4, column 4 has to be true, that negates this 8 in the red cell like before. So that 8 in row 4, column 9 is false either way. If one of the fins is true, it's false. And if all three of those fins are false, it is also false. Now, if you found that a little difficult to understand, please rewind the video and watch this example again because it is worth it. That 8 is false. All right, next one. All right, let's take a look at candidate three, and the base sets will be in the columns this time, which means the eliminations will be in the rows. So let's light up the threes, and we're going to look at column four, column seven, and column nine. And what we've got here is here is your sashimi cell in row six, column nine. There's your sashimi cell. The yellow cells would have been a swordfish, but we've got four fins because once again, we've got two base sets in one shoot. And again, it happens to be the same vertical shoot as the last example, but now there's gonna be four fins and there can only be one elimination. And because the base sets are in the columns, the eliminations will be in the rows. So the elimination is in row six and it's right there. So you can eliminate that candidate three. That will be false. Whether those fins are all false or whether any one of them is true, that candidate three in row six, column eight, is false. Okay, next one. All right, let's highlight candidate five, and we're gonna look at row two, row six, and row nine. There are your base sets. And this time, the sashimi cell does not have a number placed in it, but rather has some odd candidates other than the fish digit, here being one, seven, and eight. But there's your swordfish, and we've got a fin here, in row six, column four. So because the base sets are in the rows, the eliminations are in the columns, and the only candidate we can eliminate here is this candidate five in row four, column five. That will be false. Everyone understand that? All right, let's do one more. Okay, last but not least, let's look at candidate nine, and the base sets are going to be in the columns this time in column one, column four, and column eight. Now there is your swordfish, here is your sashimi cell, and we've got two fins this time. And because the base sets are in the columns, the eliminations can be in the rows, and they have to be in the same block with the fins, so that would be row five, and we can eliminate these two candidate nines, the one here and the one here. They are both false. Whether those fins are both false or one of them is true, that negates the two candidate nines in the two red cells. All right, that's going to do it for today. That was plenty of examples, and we'll do even more in video number 13A, so stay tuned for that. So let's go back outside and finish up. Thanks for watching. Finned and sashimi swordfish are not capable of providing as many candidate eliminations as basic swordfish, of course, but as I am sure you will experience, sometimes a single candidate elimination in a strategic location can unlock the whole puzzle. So never underestimate the usefulness of any solving technique. You should keep your eyes open for all possibilities at all times. There will be an adjunct video for all three types of swordfish containing numerous additional examples of each one, basic, finned, and sashimi. That will be video number 13A, so be sure to watch for that. And then we will be moving on to some simple chains. An alternate inference chain, or AIC, that uses the same digit candidate all the way through is called an X chain. We will cover the longer X chains later on in the course. But the next three videos will cover three very specific types of X chains that have only three links each. Strong, weak, strong. Each one kind of has its own shape and characteristics, and giving them special names will help you identify them more easily. The first one we're going to talk about is called a turbo fish, and that will be video number 14. So I hope you will join me for that very interesting lesson. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Until then, be well, 
and be happy.